Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We're going to have a youth slash young adult worship led Sabbath and um, we are excited to um, lead this church service and um, we're so glad you're here. We're going to have a quick call to worship. Good morning, everyone. For the call to worship this morning, I have chosen Psalm 69, verses 30 and 31. I will praise the name of God with song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hooves. Our opening song, O Brother Be Faithful, number 602. stand. <laughs> us to continually persevere, to stay faithful by trusting in you, not trusting in our own ways, not trusting in our own abilities, but surrendering to you. Help us to stay faithful, Lord. May your spirit be here and speaking to our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Our scripture today is from Jude 1, verse 20 through 23. So pull out your Bibles or your phones. But you, beloved... 
building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Okay, we're going to sing some songs, and normally we let you get by easy sitting down. <clears throat> but we're going to invite you to stand up for 612 Onward Christian Soldiers, if you want to. But you should. <laughs> <laughs> because it says stand up stand up for Jesus that's if you want to <laughs> but he's watching <laughs> Victory unto victory, His army shall be 
for the children's story. We're going to meet over here this Sabbath. So, I mean, lamb's offering, yeah. <laughs> so before the children's story, have our lamb's offering. And we'll meet over here. Go ahead, grab those baskets, and come on down. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. That's good. Today I want to tell a children's story that I, when I was your age, it was honestly one of my favorites. And it's based on 2 Kings chapter 6 in the Bible. There were some men that were helping out the prophet Elisha. And they had a school. Problem was, their school was getting a little too small. So they needed to expand. In order to expand, you need to do some building, right? So they had to chop down trees with axes and get their saws out and make out different logs in order to create a brand new school. And there was a little boy who had borrowed an axe from a friend. And as he was helping Elisha and the other folks build the building, he was chopping and chopping and chopping. And after many hours of chopping, the Bible says that his axe head came off the handle. Oh no, it's not good, right? So the axe head goes off the handle and it goes flying high in the air and kerplunk, psh, it landed in water, deep water too. Oh no, right? That's terrible. So this little boy goes to Elisha because he remembered that Elisha was a prophet of God and had been given special power by God to do different miracles. And he thought, why not just ask Elisha to help me out? He goes to Elisha, I've lost my axe and it was borrowed. How am I going to get it back? Can you please help me? And Elisha, through the power of God, helped him out. He took a stick and he put it in the middle of the lake and by the power of God, the Bible says the axe head came up and floated. <gasps> wow. Isn't that amazing? And then the little boy was able to wade out and get it. And he got his axe head back because of the power of God. Boys and girls, the power of God is real. And by faith, we can understand it. As long as we keep coming to Jesus, that same power 
is available today too. And like that little boy, he asked, Elisha, please help me. We can also ask God for help no matter what. Okay, guys? Let's bow our head for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the story of the boy that lost the axe head and got it back. Thank you for answering that prayer of his. Help us, Lord, also to continually rely on your power and to learn about you daily. Thank you for this encouraging story. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all can go back to your seats. It's time for our morning prayer. Is there any special requests anyone would like to share? Any others? Roberto? Yes. Any praises? There should be more more praises than requests, I hope. Anybody? <laughs> Tanya? Okay, uh, where possible, let's kneel for prayer. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you today uh, here in your house. We thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for your house here that we can come to you. Uh, we thank you for each person who made it here today. We thank you for uh, the harvest. Thank you for the lives of uh, Elif and also of my dad for their birthdays. Thank you for all the blessings that uh, we even take for granted all the time that we forget. But you've blessed us with so many things, and we, you bless us with every day. Thank you for our uh, country, for the freedoms. Thank you for our veterans. We pray that you'll be with each one of them. Uh, we know that you have... Uh, challenges be with each one of them I pray that you'll be with the Crogstead family at this time thank you for all of their service to this church we pray for Sandy's uh, aunt and that family we pray for the radio station and fundraising for that please continue to bless that uh, we've seen how you've been working with that we pray for 
Tim this morning that the message he brings will be from you and open our hearts to hear what he has to say. We pray that you'll be with all of us in this coming week. Keep us safe and bring us back here uh, next week. In your name we pray. Amen. Our good friend Amal Kadki is now going to help with the offering. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, November 11 is Veterans Day. So today we give special honor to our military veterans, those who have put their lives on the line to ensure our freedom, whether in times of war or times of peace. Our military are there for us, protecting our shores and skies. As we ponder that, let's also remember that each one here is engaged in fierce battle, a battle called the Great Controversy. Our struggle between good and evil, we already know from the Bible who will win the battle, but until such a time, we are living in an embattled world. We have many soldiers among us, as well, they are our global mission pioneers, pushing back the frontiers of the spiritual world. Global mission is a frontline arm of Adventist mission, an office of the seven-day Adventist church world headquarters. The organization sends volunteer missionaries typically for one or two years to reach people in area of the world where there are no seven-day Adventist members. Global Mission Pioneers and Cross-Cultural Seven-Day Adventist missionaries are working to tell the world about the love of Jesus. In some of the words, hardest to reach places. So let's give them our support today and above all, let us uphold them in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this land in which we live and the many blessings that you have poured out on us as individuals and as a country. And as we remember our veterans, as we remember the blessings that we have this Sabbath day, and we return 
a small portion of that to you. We pray that it would go to further your work around the world, that missions would be on all of our hearts and all of our minds, that we would see the mission field that is the world and the mission field that is our backyard, that there are souls who are longing to know you. Bless this offering this morning. Take it and multiply it a thousandfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Jewel and Piper will have our special music this morning at this time. Good morning, everyone. Today we will be singing What a Beautiful Name by Hillsong.
serve a powerful God. Amen? Good morning. Oh, good morning. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So, um, we're often late with things. Um, Same. <laughs> well, we, we try to be on time. And I always laugh about... Uh, there's a comedian that talks about the, the, the doctor in, in the waiting room, and there's no chance you're not going to wait because that's the name of the room. <laughs> so I have this tendency of always being late to things. It's, it's the way we do it. But we didn't forget. I guess that's the point. And the church didn't forget. It was just us being late. So we want to thank you, Tim, for the work that you do uh, as our Bible worker, as our associate pastor, whatever title you want to put on it. You have served uh, our church, and you have served all of us, and we appreciate that a lot. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and so we're a couple weeks late, but we want you to know that you are not forgotten, and we appreciate you. Thank you. And I'd like to pray with you if that's okay. Yes, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Tim. We thank you for the ministry that he uh, has in this church. We thank you for the leadership that he's, he's provided and the ministry that he is, he's done. We pray that you will continue to bless him as he, he does the work here in Detroit Lakes and surrounding communities, as he trains us in how to do the work. We pray that you will continue to bless him in all that he does. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Thanks, church family. Love you guys. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for all the prayers and the those that volunteered and put time in for our series falling in love with jesus we live for jesus amen he gives us that ability to persevere and speaking of perseverance if you are a veteran if you have served our country in any capacity public health service whatnot navy army marines could you please stand or raise your hand. All right. <laughs> Thank you for serving our country. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to, to give back to our country. Self-sacrifice, putting the needs of the country first, being ready at any time. Um, there's a lot of drills that go into things a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, and, and it's, it takes a lot to give your heart and yourself for the service of our country. But also, God is calling us to serve Him, and that's not easy either, right? And we need to persevere no matter what comes our way, the same way that our veterans have persevered. Some have given their life, some are still here, and we, and we thank you guys for how you've served our country. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Father, give us the ability to persevere. That no matter what happens, no matter what distractions come our way, no matter what types of enemies try to hinder us. May we build each other up in faith and love, pray for each other, and continually pray for your Holy Spirit. Guide our church as we finish our part in the Great Commission. We look forward to seeing you face to face. Lord, may you be at the front of this message. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me to Jude. There's only one chapter. Very short. Yet a beautiful little letter from Jude, the brother of Jesus. Put, your, put yourself in the feet of Jude. You grew up with the Messiah. Maybe that was kind of hard. Because <laughs> this guy made no mistakes. He was perfect. 
He didn't go to the school of prophets that everybody else went to. And it must have been very intimidating at times to live with the Messiah, the promised one. Yet, looking at that first verse in Jude, he says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ. Something took place in his life. Something changed his way of thinking. With How could my brother Jesus be the Messiah too? Wow. He has power over life and death. Today I want us to focus on how Jesus prayed for people, but how he also prayed for the Holy Spirit. How did Jesus build people up? And how is Jude writing this to the church at that time? So let's look into it. Jude chapter 1, verse 17. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. Maybe you have read in the Bible the times that Jesus was attacked, that his ministry was questioned, his messiahship being the savior of the world was questioned. And the Bible also shows that he was questioned by his own family. His mother and his brothers and sisters came to Jesus wanting to get his attention and Jesus makes that claim, who are my brothers? Who is my mother? Who are my sisters? But those that do the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus politely saying, please don't interrupt the work that my Father in heaven has called me to do. Jesus dealt with these scoffers. Jesus dealt with these people causing divisions. And it's still happening today. Earlier in the book of Jude, Jude is reminding us that we are saved by the work of Jesus and we must be united under his salvation. Verse 3, Beloved, I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation. I found it necessary to, to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. If we're contending for something, that means there's a battle going on. There's a great controversy. There's a battle between good and evil. And Jude goes on to continue in verse 5. That it was Jesus who saved the children of Israel out of Egypt. The context of Jude is he's writing to the Messianic Jews. Remember how God has been there for you in the past. Rely on God with everything. Persevere no matter what. The definition of perseverance means a continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties failure, or opposition. We cannot persevere on our own, right? We need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide. Jude is bringing up, like I said in verse 18, many people following their own ungodly passions, causing divisions devoid of the Spirit. Their hearts don't want to pray to God. Their hearts don't want to lean on God. And Jude, earlier in the chapter, lists out some of those people. Verse 6, angels from heaven who did not stay within their own position of authority. Those were the angels that 
turned their back on God and said, Lucifer seems to be leading us down the right path. We're going to do that. And it has led them to be kept in eternal chains of darkness until the judgment of that great day. Jude goes on to remind the Messianic Jews of that time, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, they serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Just a reminder, that fire is not literally eternal. The fire will end when it goes out. God is not, God is merciful and he's not going to let you burn over and over and over again. God is love. But there is an end game for those that say they don't want God. And Jude is saying these are people that are devoid of the Spirit. So he's saying since there are people that are devoid of the Spirit, then what must we do? We must pray for the Holy Spirit. And I really, really, really want to encourage us today to pray for the Holy Spirit. I want you to ask God, what is the Holy Spirit calling our church to do? What is the Holy Spirit calling me to do? Going on in verse 20. When you are filled with the Spirit of God, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying for the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Jude is encouraging the people of that time and he's also encouraging us today. Remember that I'm coming back again. That God's promises are not void. Even though there are distractions, even though there are people that till this day may remind you of Cain earlier in the chapter, verse 11, woe to them for they that walk in the way of Cain Cain, the first son of Adam and Eve, had a brother named Abel. God asks them, prepare worship for me, prepare a sacrifice. Abel follows the instructions, takes the life of the lamb, worships God, and Cain brings his own garden, his own fruits, his own vegetables, and he thinks that that is good enough. But the Bible here in Jude says that Cain abandoned himself for the sake of gain. That same distraction, that same rebellion got in the way of Cain's connection with God. Going on, Jude is talking about Korah's rebellion. There's a story in the Bible of a guy named Korah who did not respect Moses' calling from God and he tried to start division because he was void of the Spirit. Instead of asking for repentance, instead of confessing and saying, Lord, I, I'm struggling with my passions, I'm struggling with my emotions, instead of surrendering to God, Korah thought, why don't I just create my own faction. You can read about that in Numbers chapter 16. These are hidden reefs at your love's feast as they feast with you without fear. Shepherds feeding themselves. Waterless clouds swept along by wind. Fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted, Wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. There is no way around it. There is unfortunately going to be people who reject the Spirit. I believe God is calling us 
to pray for those people, to have mercy on those people, to remember that even God can change anybody. Going on, verse 22, and have mercy on those who doubt. That's what the English Standard Version says. Some of your versions will say, and, and on some have compassion. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the sin. We want to be united in Christ and to be aware of people who are falsely misrepresenting Christ. We must pray for the Holy Spirit. God from up above will show us and will direct us. This is how you meet that person for where they're at. This is exactly the words that I want you to say to them. But that is not going to happen unless we pray for the Holy Spirit. Not just individually, but coming together as a church. I want to encourage you, stay for church afterwards. After Pollock, we have a prayer. Please come and pray with us. As often as you can, every week, praying for the Spirit to lead us. Without the Spirit, we cannot persevere. God will give us the ability to reach anybody as long as we ask and pray for that spirit. One of my friends, I won't say his name, but I went to school with him. We were studying to be pastors together. And about a year into his studies, he was, I believe, in the grade after me, He quit being a theology major and he switched his major to something else. But not only that, his heart had changed. Something had gone on and something had distracted him from his walk with God. Something that God had to teach me was, Tim, pray for this man. Continually. Have mercy on him in his doubts. And I read that first many years ago. Have mercy on those who doubt. Sometimes maybe your first instinct is to say something and get ahead of the Spirit. Oh, but they should know that. Oh, but they... Before you say anything, ask God what... Is your will. How do you want me to approach this? And what was so interesting about meeting my friend for where he was at was he recognized, thank you, Tim. You know that I'm struggling. And you didn't guilt trip me. You didn't shame me. You didn't tell me that I should know better. You just came alongside of me and you have been building me up by encouraging me to keep going. I would tell him, hey, I just want you to know, brother, I'm praying for you. That the same way that you can tell me anything, the same way you can tell God. And it was just that subtle reminder enough for him If anybody else had said, well, why aren't you doing this? And how come you're not at church anymore? How come we don't see you? It probably would have been a little bit too much for him. But I give God the credit that the Holy Spirit said, inch forward. God is calling us to inch forward. Some people you may have to be super direct with, but it is only the Holy Spirit that will lead you in that endeavor. Because think about this. Jude was a brother of Jesus. 
history shows that it wasn't until after Jesus died and was resurrected that he finally realized, my brother is more than my brother. He is the Messiah. He really was saying the truth. I was wrong. Oh, man. Yet God had mercy on him. Jesus had mercy on him. And maybe after, we don't know the whole story, but just think. Maybe after Jesus was resurrected, the Bible says he was on earth for another 40 days. Maybe during that 40 days, Jesus was calling Jude, hey, even though you doubted me, I prayed for you. When I went up to the Mount of Olives, when I had my time alone with God, I prayed for you over and over and over again. Your faith has made you holy and you have been able to persevere. And Jesus was like saying, hey, I want to call you to serve me in ministry. Anybody's heart can be changed by the Holy Spirit. If Jesus could pray for his brother and his family members who doubted and have it answered by God in heaven, how much more is God calling us to do the same? So I want to encourage you guys to encourage others to persevere. But before you do that, let's come together continually as a church Maybe that means having small group prayer Bible studies at each other's homes on a weekly basis. Maybe that means coming together at the church, coming to prayer meeting, specifically to pray for the Holy Spirit, to ask God, what is it that you would like us to do? Maybe Jude was a part of that group in Acts chapter 2 that asked for the Holy Spirit and the flames were over their head. Imagine how far Jude came from what he was to what he became because of Jesus. So again, I want to ask you, how can you build someone up? How is the Holy Spirit asking you to reach other people? How can you help somebody else persevere in their faith even if they're struggling even if they're doubting even if they're dealing with emotional instability pray for them encourage them and ask the holy spirit how can i meet this person for where they are at jude chapter 24 and verse 25 in the closing Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Jesus is coming again. And through our human imperfections, as long as we ask for the Spirit of God, there may be people that we can reach for him as long as we ask for the Spirit. Let's have our closing song. 311, I would be like Jesus.
let us bow our head and, and pray. I want to pray in my native language because we have only one God and only one Jesus. Tata, tu kesi limi njoro, ushimi kuri mana ziza kanduri mana ya maoro, watu jirene zawa duhai amatera ni romi zaka kanya, ushimi wano kwenye mbavu ziza we kuri mana jirene zawa vihepjo se, kumezare ruani nume muri tu kesi tuwa wana tse hano wano kwenye mbavu ziza vya tu gara gaya ho, haji kwa chachi tse, ushimi wako kuri mana kuri bana na tu kesi, shimi yose misabini zizi na jihara wengine Jesus Kristo mama watu, Amen. Amen.